Hey everyone, welcome back to White Sparrow Living, Luke 12, 6. This is Wendy. If you're new here, or even if you're not and you're just not subscribed yet, I hope you'll consider hitting that subscribe button down below, as well as the thumbs up, comment, let me know what you think, and that way YouTube will recommend my video more often so we can grow this channel. Today we'll be doing some farmhouse DIY projects using Dollar Tree items. I have no idea how many. So as we speak, my daughter Christine is at the hospital and about ready to give birth. So I have nothing more to say. I hope you guys like this video and let's get started. For our first project, I'm gonna be using an 11 by 14 picture frame, some burlap ribbon in a white chevron and white polka dot, a wooden hello sign that you get in the craft section, some lamb's ear and some boxwood slash eucalyptus from Walmart, some Waverly white chalk paint and some wax in antique, and then our glue gun, our scissors, some wire cutters, and a chenille stem. And so the first thing I'm going to do is get our frame ready and I'm going to paint that completely white. And the good thing about this is that it's black underneath so when I go to sand it down it'll let that black show through so that'll be the distressed look that we're looking for. So when you take off the back you have to be really careful because this is made out of like a foam type of material so it can break really easily. So I'm just going to fold the tabbies back instead of trying to take them out and risk breaking my frame. And so we're not going to put the backing back in, so we want it to be completely see-through. So because this is the last of my Waverly white chalk paint, I just added a little bit of water and then mixed it up a little. And since we don't need a whole lot to paint this frame, I thought this would be my final farewell to my white chalk paint. And I made sure to paint the front, the back, and all around the insides and outsides. So anytime I'm painting in a project, I use a piece of foam core poster board and I put that underneath my pieces that I need to paint. I used to use paper towels, but I always have my fan on so it's always flying and I thought that would be a distraction for you guys. So I just use this foam core and then it doesn't mess up my work surface that is white butcher paper. So it keeps it a little bit nicer and neater and it's not so ugly for you guys to look at. So now I'm using my Waverly Wax and I'm painting my Hello sign and I go inside all of the edges and the inside the letters and then I just use a paper towel to wipe it off to get it to the shade that I want. So if you want it lighter, you can actually get some water and add to it and rub it off a little bit. And then if you want it darker, you just keep adding layers of the wax. So once my chalk paint is pretty much dry, I'm going to take my sanding block and just distress it and let that black show through. And I'm going to go on the inside and on the outside and I'm going to kind of skip some areas so it's not just a solid line all the way around. And so it just makes it look more rustic and realistic. So now I'm going to take my lamb's ear and I cut it down to the right size and I'm going to place it in the bottom left hand corner and I just hot glued it down and I used two pieces which is two dollars from Walmart and one of them had a few leaves missing so I covered that up with some scrap pieces that I had in my scrap can. And then on top of that, I'm going to put the mini eucalyptus or boxwood or whatever it is from Walmart that's 97 cents. I don't all the way love these because they have the leaves that are kind of looking upside down. But when you mix them with the lamb's ear, it kind of camouflages that. So at least you still get some bang for your buck and you have a filler. 
So now I'm going to make a bow and I'm using the burlap ribbon and so I started with the chevron and I just rolled it over three times on each side and because it's single sided this way works really well to kind of camouflage and not show the insides so I just fold it in half to get the center and then take my scissors and make tiny little slits so that my chenille stem can go inside of those slits and then I can manipulate the loops however I want. And then I'm gonna go back in with the polka dotted ribbon and place that on top and then I'll decide which one I like better on top or bottom. And then I'm gonna pull the second set of loops through to the first one so that they're mixed in and intermingled and it looks like one big pretty double patterned bow. So now I'm going to take my little wooden hello and I hot glued that to the top right hand corner and then to hang it I just added a teeny tiny little Chanel stem over toward the left at the top and that way it would hang straight. So I think this is so adorable and sweet and so rustic farmhouse looking. And I also think this would be really cute on a front door as your wreath. So I really love it and I hope you guys like it too. For our next project, we're gonna use another one of the 11 by 14 frames, some black and white buffalo check fabric that I got for $2 a yard, a checkerboard game, and we're just gonna be using the pieces, a black Sharpie paint pen, as well as a white one, and then one of these little chalkboard tags, some burlap ribbon, and then four cotton balls, some white cardstock, and you can't really see it, but it's there. Some Waverly wax in antique, and then my hot glue gun, a Chanel stem, and my scissors. And so the first thing we're gonna do is take out all of the little chess pieces, just the little square pieces of wood, and I'm gonna keep all the little round pieces in case I need that for something else. So now I'm gonna take my square pieces and I'm putting them on my painting foam core and I'm gonna take some Waverly wax and I'm gonna add some water to it because I wanna give these a little bit of color but not much. And these are gonna look like, or I'm gonna try and make these look like Scrabble pieces. And so I just took a paper towel and dipped it in the paint and water mix and then just rubbed it onto each one of the little tiles. And so I made some of them dark and some of them light and just to give it a different shade on each one. And I think it makes it look a little more realistic as Scrabble pieces.
So I had looked online to see what Scrabble pieces actually looked like and I had contemplated sanding the corners of each of these, but then decided better not. So instead I just took my paint and gave it a little edge so that it gave it more definition. So now I'm gonna get my frame ready and I am gonna use the backing this time. And so in order to make my buffalo check stay in its true colors of white and black, I first covered the backing with the white cardstock so that you couldn't see through the fabric and it wouldn't change colors or get dingy. So then I just cut out a piece that wasn't wrinkled and covered my backboard with it using hot glue. And I used the grid of the pattern of the buffalo check to make sure that I kept it straight. And then since I'm gonna be using this as a Scrabble board, I wanted to make sure that if there was any leftover squares towards the edges that I could just even out the difference and make it equal, if that makes sense. So now I'm going to take my black paint pen and write my letters on each of the tiles and I had toyed around and played with the words that I wanted to use and made them work out to where they intersected and I was able to use all of the tiles and it worked out exactly right, like eerily exactly right because there were 32 tiles and the words I had were exactly 32 and then my buffalo check was kind of an afterthought and so when I put that buffalo check onto the backing of the frame and I counted how many squares I needed across and down it was exactly the right amount so that was just crazy awesome how that worked out so then I looked online to get the number values for each of those letters and wrote that with a skinnier pen so I'm going to tell you a story we're gonna start with God. And I always say God is love. And so we have God and we have love. And in the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God and the Word was God. And we know that the Word is Jesus. And of course we also know that Jesus is God's Son. And so we have Jesus, Son, God, and love. And now I'm gonna tell you a story about a man named James. And James met a girl named Margie. And they fell in love and got married and had a baby girl named Wendy. Two years later, they had another baby girl named Misty. But James really wanted a son. And so finally, after the third try, they had a son. And his name was James' son, Jameson. So that's the story of us. And so as you can see, this is a birthday present for my mom, who, if you remember from the last video, her birthday is always right around, if not on, Mother's Day. And we have to have two separate presents. And in the last video, I made her Mother's Day present. And so now this is for her birthday. So now I'm gonna just clean off the glass on the inside and then put down my backing and then pull the little tabs over to keep that in place. So 
So now I'm gonna make a sweet little bow for the top left hand corner and I just fold it over in thirds and leave some hanging down and then just use a chenille stem and put that in the middle. And I kind of crunch it down so that it looks like it's actually tied in a bow. And then I'm gonna fold the ends in half and cut those at an angle to dovetail them. So anytime I use just a simple bow, I like to put something in the middle. You could put just another piece of burlap folded in thirds and make it look like the middle part of the tied bow, but I want to make a cotton bud. And so I do have some that I purchased from Hobby Lobby, but I thought I would try to make one using Dollar Tree items. So what I did was took some scrap leaves from some kind of floral stem that I used the flowers from and took some brown paint and just painted those brown on both the inside and the outside. I stuck it on a skewer to make it a little bit easier to paint. So then I'm gonna take four cotton balls and kind of roll them up so that they get a little bit tighter. And then I'm gonna hot glue those into kind of a square or a cotton bud. And then on the last one, I'll put hot glue on the two outside cotton balls so that they all come together. And then I'm gonna cut my leaves apart and glue those in between the seams of each of those cotton balls. And I just kind of used my nail to stick it in between that little crack and then fold it over after I glue it. And I think it looks super cute and looks like a cotton bud to me. So now I'm gonna take one of my chalkboard tags and they come with little pieces of jute twine. And so I'm gonna write in our last name, which is Holt, well it's my maiden name, and then established 1966, which is when my parents got married. And then I'll take a piece of the jute twine and tie it into a sweet little bow. And instead of sending it through the hole, I'm just going to put it right above it so it looks like it's been fed through there. But since it's not going to be hanging on anything, it'll sit straight and cute. And then I'll just take some more hot glue and put that at the bottom right hand side of my picture frame. And here it is all finished. I put it on a Dollar Tree plate holder and I love how this turned out and it means so much obviously because it's personalized, but you can totally do this and you just use your names and make them intertwine at some point and it will always work out. And if it doesn't, you can add different words like family or love or your last name, but it's kind of fun to figure it out too. So I love Buffalo Check with burlap and then you throw in a cotton bud. I think this is all things farmhouse and I hope my mom likes it and I hope you guys do too. So while I was editing, I got word that we have a new grandson. And so here's a picture of our son-in-law, Brandon, and he's ready to go. And here is my daughter and our sweet Connor Brent Bowers.
It's kind of hard to talk after that. For our next project, we need a laundry basket, a t-shirt or polo shirt, some nautical rope, and this is the kind from Walmart, but the Dollar Tree brand is a lot smoother and prettier, I think. Some jute twine, and then some one inch wood beads from Amazon, and I'll have these linked in the description box below. Some Waverly antique wax, and I only used the elephant. I didn't use the black or the white. And then my hot glue gun and scissors. So this is basically just painting this basket up and I used my elephant and a sponge brush from Dollar Tree and I just started pouncing away. And I used quite a bit of the paint because I painted the inside as well, but it really started going quickly once I figured out that I needed to use the side of the brush and that would cover more ground. And then after I got the elephant color all the way down, then I went back in with my black and just did random spots here and there to make it a little bit darker and give it a metal look. So now I'm going to take my t-shirt and I turned it inside out and I cut it off right under the arms to get rid of the collar and the sleeves. And so it's got two little slits on either side and so I'm going to use that to feed some nautical rope through. So you could use your hot glue gun for this or even some fabric glue. But I decided to go ahead and make this pretty sturdy and use my sewing machine. So what I did was I folded over the hem so that the good side was showing and then I pinned it all the way down and then I'm going to run that through my sewing machine. If you put your pins horizontally, when you feed it through the sewing machine, you can just run over those straight pins and then pull them out once you're done sewing. So I do that on both sides of the shirt and I cut off the rope so that I can tie them on either side. So now I'm going to take my shirt and I'm going to put it into my basket and then the top part I'm going to fold over the top edge of the basket. And then I was going to use the rope to tie handles into it but this rope was really hard to make into knots. It's just so hard and so I tried doing a sweet little bow on each side and there was nothing sweet or perky about that. So I just decided to cut it off, tie a knot and tuck it under that fabric. And then I took some jute twine and if all else fails, add beads. And so in place of the handles that were gonna be served by the nautical rope, I instead made it into beaded handles and I think it turned out even cuter anyway. So I just tied the jute twine to the basket and then added my beads and then tied it off on the other side.
So for the bottom, there's a couple ways you could handle this. I just opted to hot glue that to the bottom of the basket, and that way, whatever I have inside, when you pull it out like a blanket, it won't come up with it. But you could add another piece of fabric and just cut it into a circle and sew that on or hot glue it or use fabric tack. But this way, when I pull my blanket out, it will stay in place. And here's the finished product, and I love this. I'm telling you guys, it looks so real. It looks like metal. You cannot tell that this is a plastic laundry basket. And I didn't have to use my white chalk paint because the white plastic was peeking through underneath that paint. And I wish you could see this in real life. You guys come over to my house and look at this basket because it really does look like metal. And then I just placed a blanket in there and a pillow and a sweet little plant. And so not only is it super cute, it's super functional and it's sitting right in front of my fireplace, which you'll see in just a second. But I love this. And yeah, you guys come over and see it. For our final project, we'll be using two of these bunny signs, some jute webbing from burlapfabric.com, and this is only $6.99 for 10 yards, and I'll have that in the description box below. Two of these cardboard medallions from those triangular frames, and then some more of the lamb's ear from Walmart, and some Dollar Tree florals. I don't know what these are called, but they're sure pretty and then some more of the one inch beads from Amazon. And these are $12.99 for 200 pieces. And then a black Sharpie paint pen, and then some sandpaper, some chalk paint, whatever you can get your hands on. In this case, it's Krylon from Home Depot, and then some elephant chalk paint, and then the Waverly Wax in Antique, and then my glue gun and scissors. And so the first thing I'm gonna do is take off the glitter that's on the sign. And I always put something underneath so that it can fall into that and not get everywhere. I'm still a little shiny from all of this glitter. Then I'm gonna take some spackle from Dollar Tree and cover up one of the holes in our sign. And then I'm gonna use the chalk paint and just paint over the backs of the signs. So I wanted this to have kind of a plank wood look but in the end it's covered up for the most part so i didn't really need to spend as much time as i did on it but it did turn out pretty cute one of the things that i noticed though is the webbing that i'm using has like a beige tint to it and so when i was doing the painting i was basically just using the whites and grays and it didn't work right with that mesh so I ended up adding the Waverly wax to give it a beigey tone so that it would match better with the jute webbing but in the end I added more greenery and flowers to it so you can't even really see it So then I also use my white chalk paint to paint my medallions and this takes about three or four coats to get it completely covered and so that you won't see those cute little lions.
So now I'm going to take my jute webbing and cut those down and I wanted them about three inches longer than my board. And so I combined two pieces together to make a pocket at the bottom. And you could use the burlap ribbon from Dollar Tree and if you try this project you can put those together. It will probably take about five rows of that size ribbon but just hot glue those together and then that's going to become our pocket. And so I took another bead of glue and at the very bottom edge I'm going to close that up and make it even with the board and then I'm going to wrap around the two sides and I want to be really tight at the bottom and then let it loosen up towards the top so it's kind of going at a diagonal. So now I'm going to take my wire and I use these rubber gloves because this has that coating on it of some sort and so it gets your hands dirty. So I'm just going to take my needle nose pliers and round off the edge so that I can have something that will stick to my hot glue when I put it on the back. And so since there's no holes, I'm going to just hot glue it and then place a little teeny piece of material, the jute webbing, so that it stays in place. And then I'm going to feed my beads on and then hot glue the other side so that it stays in place. You could drill holes in this and that would be more secure. But in case you don't have a drill, this is the way to go. So now that my medallions are dry, I'm going to take my black Sharpie paint pen and on one I'm going to write choose and on the other I'm going to write happy. And I got my spacing off and it wasn't perfect and I could have painted over it and redid it but I chose to be happy and just work with what I had. And so I did my down strokes where you make those a little bit fatter. And then I just added a little vine on each one and then you couldn't really tell that the spacing was messed up. And then it was a little too stark white so I decided to take the Waverly Wax and add some distressing around the edges and then I put some on top as well. So if you do this project, do it before you write the words. So now I'm going to hot glue those to the pockets and I just kind of tilted them at an angle and that kind of hides my spacing problem as well. And then I'm going to add my lamb's ear and the pretty flowers 
and then I ended up adding some lavender and some other white flowers again I don't know what they are but then I took chenille stems and folded them in half and twisted them at the bottom and hot glued those to the back so that they could hang on a hook And here's how they came out and I think they're so adorable and very unique and fresh and springy and a great alternative to regular wreaths which can get pretty pricey. So I think we hit it out of the park on budget because these together cost a total of $15.34. So for two pieces, I think that's a great buy. You could also hang this on your wall inside, but I just needed something for my double doors and that's always kind of a challenge. I don't know if you noticed the rug that I have out front and that is from Kai Sin. And so I'll have that linked in the description box below as well. And don't forget, if you want to be entered to win a Cricut cutting machine, make sure that you're a subscriber and you comment on the video that I'll have linked below as well. And the drawing will be held on June 1st. enjoyed this video and if you did don't forget to give it a thumbs up comment and let me know what you think and if you're not already please consider hitting that subscribe button down below as well as the little bell next to it so that you can be notified every time I upload a brand new video I hope everyone has a blessed day and remember to always be the light bye